We previously introduced the cofactor definition of the determinant for a square matrix of any size, link in the description. One of the interesting things about that definition is that the cofactor expansion will be the same along any row or along any column. So to get some practice, we're going to find all cofactor expansions for this 2x2 two two matrix. We'll begin by finding the cofactors, and then we'll look at all the expansions, so across each row and across each column. And then we'll also do a second example. 2x2 two two matrices are nice because we can see examples quickly, but if you're looking for some larger matrices and looking at their cofactors, there's a link in the description to a lesson where we do some bigger examples. Let's get into it. To find all the cofactor expansions for this 2x2 two two matrix A, we'll begin by finding all of the cofactors beginning with the cofactor of the entry in the first row in the first column. All we do is eliminate that row and that column, and then take the determinant of the remaining submatrix. The determinant of a single entry is just that entry, so 4. But then we also have to multiply by negative 1 to the power of the row number and column number for this entry. It's row 1 and column 1. So it's negative 1 to the power of 2, and thus that negative 1 just goes away. So the cofactor is 4. Now let's find the cofactor of the second entry in row 1. So we eliminate the row and the column. The determinant of the remaining submatrix is just negative 2. And then this one is going to have another negative, because you have to multiply by negative 1 to the power of the row number plus the column number. In this case, that's negative 1 to the power of 3. So we'll have two negatives. They're going to cancel out, and so the cofactor is just 2. Next, the cofactor of the first entry in the second row. Eliminate its row, eliminate its column. The determinant of the remaining submatrix is 5. And then we have to multiply by negative 1 to the power of the row number plus the column number. That's negative 1 to the power of 3. So yes, we're going to have a negative here. The cofactor is just negative 5. The last cofactor is the cofactor of the number 4 here. Eliminate the row, eliminate the column. The determinant of the remaining submatrix is just 3. And we're going to have negative 1 to the power of 4 because 2 plus 2 is 4, so that's just going to be positive 1. The cofactor then is equal to 3. Now we can find the determinant of this matrix by using cofactor expansions along any row or column. We already have all the cofactors calculated, so let's look at these. For the expansion across row 1, we take the first entry in row 1, which is 3, and then multiply by its corresponding cofactor, which we calculated to be 4. And then add the second entry in row 1, which is 5, and multiply by its corresponding cofactor, which is 2. So the determinant is 12 plus 10, which is 22. Moving on to row 2, to find the determinant by cofactor expansion across row 2, we begin with the first entry in row 2, which is negative 2. Then multiply by its corresponding cofactor, which is negative 5. Then we have to add the next entry in row 2, which is 4, multiplied by its corresponding cofactor, which is 3. This is 10 plus 12, so 22. They're the same, no surprise. Then column 1, so the cofactor expansion across column 1, we take the first entry from column 1, which is 3, and then multiply by its corresponding cofactor, which we calculated to be 4 and then go to the next entry in column 1, which is negative 2, and multiply by its cofactor, which is negative 5. This is 12 plus 10, so 22. Finally, moving on to the cofactor expansion across column 2, we begin with the first entry in column 2, which is 5, multiplied by its cofactor, which is 2, and then plus the second entry in column 2, which is 4, and multiplied by its corresponding cofactor, which is 3. This equals 22. So no matter which row we find the cofactor expansion of, we're going to get 22, the correct calculation of the determinant for the matrix, which of course agrees with the typical diagonal method, 3 times 4 is 12, minus negative 10 is 22. Now maybe you want to give this one a try yourself. We're going to find all cofactor expansions for this second matrix as well. Let's get into it beginning with the cofactor for the entry in row 1, column 1. Eliminate that row, eliminate that column. The remaining submatrix has a determinant of negative 2, and 1 plus 1 is even, so there's no more negatives. Moving on to the next entry in row 1, eliminate the row, eliminate the column. 
Negative 7 is the determinant of the remaining submatrix, and 1 plus 2 is 3. That's odd. So there's going to be another negative. They're going to cancel out, and so the cofactor is just positive 7. Then, looking at row 2, column 1, eliminate that row, eliminate that column. The determinant of the remaining submatrix is 7, and 2 plus 1 is odd, so we're going to have a negative. Finally, eliminate row 2, eliminate column 2. The determinant of the remaining submatrix is negative 5, and 2 plus 2 is even, so there's no additional negative. Those are all the cofactors. Now we can find the determinant of this matrix by looking at all of the different cofactor expansions. Beginning with row 1, we have the first entry of row 1, which is negative 5, multiplied by its corresponding cofactor, which is negative 2, plus the next entry in row 1, which is 7, multiplied by its corresponding cofactor, which is also 7. This is 10 plus 49, so 59. Then the cofactor expansion along row 2, we take the first entry in row 2, which is negative 7, and then multiply by its corresponding cofactor, which is also negative 7, and then add the second entry in row 2, which is negative 2, and then multiply by its corresponding cofactor, which is negative 5. This is 49 plus 10, so 59. Then the cofactor expansion along column 1, take the first entry in column 1, which is negative 5, multiply by its corresponding cofactor, which is negative 2, then add the next entry in column 1, which is negative 7, and then multiply by its corresponding cofactor, which is negative 7. This is 10 plus 49, so 59. Finally, the cofactor expansion along column 2. Take the first entry in column 2, which is 7, and then multiply by its corresponding cofactor, which is 7. Then add the next entry in column 2, which is negative 2, and multiply by its corresponding cofactor, which is negative 5. This is 49 plus 10, so 59. No matter which row or column you use to find the cofactor expansion, they all give the correct determinant of the matrix, which is 59. So that's how to find cofactor expansions of a 2x2 two two matrix, and thus how to find the determinant of a 2x2 two two matrix. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. Since you can pick any row or column with these cofactor expansions, remember to pick a smart row or column. So pick one with zeros if you can. I'll see you next time. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind. Two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus. I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest. Happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant. Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments. The union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need.